Okay, how are we doing? We are live. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. It's been a really, really busy day. Um, I've got a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. Um, I got uh, some trips going on. Well, there'll be like short day trips and I've got a long trip coming along. Um, I might get to show you the inside of a 1880s um, military warehouse that stored it. Um, I'm still trying to get everything together on that. Next week, I also go when I pick up thousands of things for free. Um, and I'm going to give you some call-outs next week on a sourcing avenue that I've talked about here and there. Um, I'm not going to give it out today, but this one's paid off more than any of the other ones lately. And I'm going to give you a big one next week when that video hits here. Um, I think it'll be an eye-opener. Next Thursday is that one. I'll be gone for like half the day. I'm returning, leaving early in the morning and then returning. Um, but I think you'll have an eye opener with a whole new avenue of sourcing. And again, I'm not going to call it out till I get everything situated because um, I want to show you show you um, a source in person. Um, I'm taking um, the GoPro with me. Um, I've already got an okay from um, the, the place I'm getting the stuff from too. Again, this is a free pickup, thousands of items I will be getting next week. Um, probably one of the best free pickups I've gotten in probably at least a year, I would say. Um, it's going to be some good stuff here. So I'm, you're going to see a couple videos on what I pick up. Patreon, you'll have, um, exclusive video with different stuff in it going a little more in depth. Um, I just posted a video today, tips and tricks. Uh, it went up like two hours before this show. Um, the big thing on the video here, I know there's going to be a bunch of people that already knew all that. That's nothing. The majority of people that I talk to haven't a clue on most everything I show in that video. Even some longtime people who have been on eBay for a very long time um, still don't have knowledge on some of the other things that I show in that video. And I literally, just since that video went up, I got three different emails from people, and there's several new posts on that email, on that video talking about they hadn't a clue on something, and they were losing a bunch of sales by not um, checking certain things out. So if you want to know some, I, they're not secrets. They're just stuff that I, I know every little aspect of eBay because I've been on so, so, so darn long. Not intentional. It's just after a long time of searching around. I know every little preference or click or button in eBay pretty much inside and out. And there's some things that if you do it, like um, uh, bitter ruling and stuff like that. Go watch the video if you want to see something. And again, I've got four people just in the last two hours that sent me something saying, and one's actually sent me a screenshot. Had I had more time to get some information from them, I might have been able to show you the screenshot. But this person missed offers on, oh my gosh, I mean, uh, it was two pages worth of stuff that they had no clue that were getting turned down because of some settings they had. So uh, again, even if you've been on for a little while, this is one that most people don't know. There's there's ways to look at bids that were turned down from some of these policies. Most people know the policies only when they're doing them. They, they set the policies, they leave it, they never go back to that page ever. So people that were on three and four years hadn't a clue about these pages. And what brought this this video up, I was helping somebody in their store. I don't have a lot of time to do that. It was somebody who's been very gracious with sharing stuff and, and, and information from them as well. So I helped them in their store a little bit. Um, and we looked at exactly what I was talking about. And they had more pages of turned down um, bidders than I've ever seen. And, you know, it was a lot of them. So that was that's what brought this on. And this is something, again, that I've never seen anybody else even acknowledge on here. So um, I'm not the only one who knows it, I'm sure. But, um, you know, most people just don't think about it, I guess, is the key. I look at every little thing. I'm very anal retentive on all the little uh, radio buttons on eBay and all the site preferences and, and stuff like that. And I promise you that I spent some time um, trying to put together a video that's going to give you just the dope on what's going on and, and save you a lot of hassle. Um, let me pop up and see who's here. I can see you guys can hear me. Um, we've been busy. Marky's working on something actually as we speak. Um, I'm going to uh, be in Cincinnati for a couple of days, um, and then I'm actually going to be in Illinois on another trip it looks like. Um, hopefully GoPro goes with me. Um, the, the Cincinnati one's probably, a, a, I can at least show you some of it. The Illinois, I'm not so sure because it's um, an older gentleman. And Anyway, we're going to see what happens on those. Um, again, next week I will have at least one pickup video on something. You'll be really surprised in quantity and the price is zero. Um, so 
I'll let you go, and we'll see what that happens next week. I can't wait, really. I'm actually kind of excited to get that pick up. Uh, Duncan, how are you doing, Duncan? No, I do not have any slow sales. Um, in fact, I, I could put together a video of just what sold today, and you'd be surprised. In the last five hours, I literally the last five hours, if you look at my store, you can probably figure out. I sold a Chuck Berry 78 for 125 bucks. I sold a, uh, I think it's Jan Sin Korea photo for 125 to somebody from Seoul, believe it or not. And then I just sold within the last hour or so $200 Santa Claus cards from the Victorian area, $100 a piece. That's just those. I sold seven labels today for $34.50 a piece. Many individual cards. I sold a couple booklets, um, brochures, and I actually got some brochures today. Um, coincidentally. Um, but I mean, my sales, if I added up everything, I at least got 1400 in today, just today. No lie. That's straight figures. Just on the store I share with you, we've done maybe 660 as of right now. And I still got um, five more hours to go for the end of the day. I get a lot of sales at night. I don't know about everybody else, but I get more sales at night usually than I do in some certain days of the week. Friday is usually slow in the evening, but I get them in the daytime. Again, I, I we'll stray off for just a minute here. I'm going to give you some more useful information. Know the times when you're busy. I know if, if you are out and about, it may not be as easy to track what's going on. We keep track of days of the week. So, like, I can pretty much set my clock for Friday sales, when it's busy, when it's not, what happens Sunday mornings, whether S Sunday afternoons are better and Sunday evenings are, like, way better mornings pick up on monday mornings and stuff like that i mean these are things that are important because if you can judge when you get more sales having stuff up on certain days and the same similar style of items up on those same days can help you increase you have more opportunities because more people are looking on those specific times i know that sounds a little odd but when you work in like corporate america they track everything even down to the minutes sometimes every restaurant every retail establishment even warehouse pickers. Jeez, every every industry I've ever worked in tracks things by the minute. You can pull up reports in every corporate America job you ever worked in of all kinds of stuff. And I know, again, everybody's not going to have to deal with that, but eventually you're going to have to, you know, think of every little way you can to squeeze out another dime out of somebody, you know, with sales and stuff. That goes into cross-listing and stuff like that, too. So, Knowing the best time to get a bunch of stuff up, you know, what's the best day? You know, I hear that a lot. Back in the day, if you're doing auctions, you'd have men Sunday evening. I'd start them, you know, on, on uh, one day of the week, and they'd always end on Sunday, whether there are seven, five, or three-day auctions. I never did 10 because they usually cost you, I think, 10 cents more back in the day to run 10-day auctions. But for us, you know, figuring out the proper days and things, and I know there'll be people that tell you it doesn't matter, but for certain items it does. The the folks that are older aren't going to be buying stuff Sunday mornings. I can tell you that for sure. Church for one thing. Saturday sometimes same similar issue. Saturday evenings could be slow. Fridays could be slow when people are getting off work. They're more going to hang out, you know. So Friday evenings you you should see a little bit of a, a stagnation there. So I mean that's what I see, you know. And I I set my clock so to speak by by my sales. So. Yeah, but no, Duncan, I haven't had any issues. Haven't touched a promoted listing since that all started, all that junk with promoted listings. Haven't touched one. I have no decrease in sales whatsoever. I am up over last year a couple percentage points as well, right now. So an increase I'm, I'm talking about. So I've got a decent increase above and beyond a 3%. 3% is what we want every single year. I'm running 5% now. We were running the beginning of the year way up, but I never dropped off. So I'm comparing, you know, a different standpoint, I guess you could say. We've done a lot of things different this year. We've got Crosslist. I've got, you know, our own platform, our own site coming up. We've been posting things on other platforms and sites, as I said. So my sales overall is what I look at now. I don't just look at my eBay stuff and say, hey, that's what I'm doing. My sales numbers now are a combined total. I don't worry about what one site's doing or what another site's doing because when you start pulling and, and cross-listing stuff on different platforms, your sales on one, on, on one site could be a little lower, but on another site, they could be way up. So you want a grand total of that because if you're pulling and cross-listing, obviously all those items couldn't sell on one specific site because you've got them listed on multiple sites. So 
you know, that's just what I see with that. Let's get to some questions. Um, I've got a few things just to show you. Just a little stack of paper that I got. Some interesting stuff, all from the 1930-ish down to the 1910-20, somewhere in that range. But we'll show you those here. It's something to look for, something I find almost daily if I go out digging. Uh, let's see. Let's go with the Johnsons. How are you doing? I do remember you were in Wales. I do remember you saying that. Stay awake till midnight to watch it. Yeah, the time zone thing. I hear that a lot. Um, and I talked to several folks from Australia. Um, we got Duncan up here as well. So let's see. You're Karen. How are you doing, Karen? Uh, I will have a Patreon video up. Um, I see Carl's here too. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be a bolo. This weekend, I've got the first of the Victorian reproduction Christmas uh, ornament videos. You're going to see on the Art Professor how to make some Christmas ornaments, and they're going to. I'm going to have a link or a um, attachment at the bottom, so you can print off a copy of some of the material that that will be in the video. So you won't need to have an original. I'm going to be using vintage items to make these, so it's going to be a, a very realistic thing. I'm going to show you all the stuff that you can buy, places to get the stuff, what you want, and the costs as well. So you'll see all that too. And I'm going to show you how to modify, and we're going to talk about Dresden a little bit, and we're going to talk about um, the styles, the techniques, what they did. And I'm going to give you not just how to make it, but we're going to talk a little bit about history. It's going to be several parts, good time. So there might be like three different videos up within a week time over the same aspect of it. Now, I've got a Dresden one coming up on how to make those in your house, but it's a lot more complicated than than just the videos you'll see. So it may be the last part of it, maybe in two weeks for that video, because there's some molding and some other things that I have time that I have to wait like a day and a half between one step to the next to do it. So the video for that one's going to be something that's taken me several days um, time worth um, going because I have to wait and let stuff dry and set and then you know come back and do a little more then let that dry and set so you're going to see something really interesting um, though you're going to see um, some recreations on them as I said so that's a done deal uh, one's already about done edited again I updated them they were done for originally for the other channel and I just kind of cut out all that stuff and then it ended up being awful so I've since reshot them um, but I think this one's much better. It's going to add a lot more stuff to the video. Again, that's coming up on Sunday evening. That will be up, no doubt about it. It's it'll be it's a done deal at this point. So antiques are staying slowly steady. Yeah, the more you get up, the more you're going to sell. We listed some stuff. Obviously, I had a full house till six o'clock today. Um, usually, I don't have as many people, but you know, schools in now, so a lot of the the, the people that work for us are in school during the day. So. After school's out, there's a whole bunch of people all at once, so it's kind of hectic in the afternoon and morning-wise. Maybe there's a couple people here at nine, and that's about it. You know, nine till. Hopefully, I usually try and get them cut off by four when you know other people come in too. But so it's been just a hectic day. I'm here. If if somebody's working in our building, usually, and I'm around, I'm always here. Um, I, I might step out to do a pickup or something, but that's about it. And again, I did do a couple pickups today. Did two trips out, and then literally the rest of my time was right here. I get up real early, so sometimes I'm already on the road traveling by 6.30 or before. And I've already dropped off my son, and I'm actually on the expressway by that point usually. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Carl, how are you doing? Be back before it starts. Have to list something for someone first. Ah, well, good luck with that one. Hey, Aaron, how are you doing? I have not had much time to pop on to Instagram at all. I didn't even put a call out for this live show today, if that gives you any idea. Um, sometimes I'm bad on that. I'm not a big cell phone person, for those of you who know. For those of you who text with me, and I'm sure Aaron can say, I, I thought I saw it. Yeah, there's Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter 2. Check him out if you haven't. Me and him talk very often. Um, I've got fat fingers, so I hate typing on that. I'll probably buy a bigger phone maybe next time when something happens with this one, but I take care of my phones. I've had this one now for a couple of years, and it's a nice one. It does everything I need it to. Probably other people might say otherwise, but I'm not a big fancy person. I don't really care. Name-wise, I'm not an Apple person at all. I mean, I like some of the features, but I don't buy something based on name. Um, David, how are you doing, David? Didn't know about the auto feedback tool. Yeah, that's another one people have told me. I tried to put like six good things in that video um, of stuff that are just oddball things with eBay that just most people don't don't pay attention to some of these used to be very prevalently talked about on ebay 
Another thing too, let me let me shoot this out here too. Uh, we've been doing a test. I've got two other people, and we've been calling eBay trying to get answers on a few things. And we're going to touch on that in a real video coming up real soon here. Um, I may or may not show screenshots, but they've been changing all the policies if you haven't seen. Every policy I have looked at now is vague as can be compared to how it used to be. Um, I'm not going to call out what they are because there's just so many of them that were like this. I, I, it looks like they literally removed all the content in the policies that, that made specific sense and told you what the policy is. We've been trying to get a straight answer on a policy between me and a couple other people now for almost three weeks. And the, the answers we get are constantly different about the exact same two listings that we're digging into. So that's very troublesome because they don't know the own policy basically is the gist of it. It's, it's a little troublesome, and you can't talk to the people who handle the department that deal with the exact policy. You have to talk to Help Desk. They text or whatever they do with the, the department, and then they refer it back. So the information is not correct, and some of the comments that were even made from the, the department we were trying to seek, their answers didn't match the, the, the actual word-for-word -word policy stated on eBay. So anyway, you'll, you'll get a little in-depth on that one here. It's not a rant. It's a money saver because it's an issue that could save me thousands of dollars a month if the policy is changed and they're not going after people for doing certain things. So I'll let it at that. I'm not going to shoot it out until we got the final. We're, we're doing a dozen of these. So I'm going to have a dozen individual calls between three people over a four-week time frame, almost four weeks, from three different people, different time zones, different everything. And we're going to show you the results from talking to customer service. It's not going to be a dog on eBay per se, but it's a frustration that I addressed on a, on the, the chat with them. And many of you have addressed similar issues that you can call eBay and get different answers no matter which day of the week you call. If you don't like the first answer, you can just call back and get another eBay rep and get a totally different answer. And um, I'm going to lay it out for you, and you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. Because that's the biggest frustration I have is that staff doesn't understand it. And, and we even try to get information on how long these folks worked there. The last one was there for three years, so they should have known what I was talking about. But anyway, Shipping Sunshine, how are you doing? Taps Feet. Uh, let's see here. What's up, party people? Class starts soon. Hey, Dom Dom. Yeah, we're going to be doing another show um, with Chris as well on my channel. I think we set it up for next Friday, not tomorrow, but a week from tomorrow. Um, again, Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunters. Follow him if you don't. Um, he's We're like uh, almost two peas in a pod. Like the same things, comic books and sci-fi and fantasy um, all that kind of stuff are awesome. That's some of our biggest things. So anyway, Chris, too, as I said, Thrift Shop uh, Hustler is going to be on as well. If you haven't checked him out, check him out as well. He works for the American Cancer Society, does a lot of good stuff for, you know, helping out. So, you know, check him out as well. Treasure Experts, how are you doing? Hey, Annie, how are you doing, Annie? Good to see you on. Yeah, I did. I responded to that too. I saw on the hip postcard one there too. Um, I already uh, had conversed with them about that same issue. Um, so anyway, I'm going to share that with the whole Patreon page as well. Charlie Hustle, how are you doing? Dang, I'm prompt. I try to be prompt, but literally, um, I had employees here till just after six, and then it was like my eat time, move stuff around, set up the camera, and all that stuff. I barely get here, it seems like, some days. Yeah, and then I, I rushed to get a video up. I was so busy yesterday, I didn't even get a video up. So the video that was up uh, a couple hours ago was supposed to have been up yesterday, just FYI. Regina, a.k.a. Moondog Pickers, how are you doing? Good evening. Hustle and Grind Calgary, there you are, back from Calgary. We might be in Calgary, not in, within the year, it sounds like, too. So that could be a thing. Don has subliminal messages in the intro. No, no, no subliminal messages, Ship and Sunshine. Um, there's a flash in there um, that we're probably going to edit. I'm going to redo, not necessarily redo the beginning, but just clean it up a little bit. Um, there's some after um, effects that weren't totally cleaned up. Again, that was the first real in-depth animation I ever did on the program I'm using. So um, Anime Studio. So uh, I've gotten much better at it. Um, you guys will see some animation here on the other channel in the near future. 
Uh, and hey, Carl, as I said, welcome, welcome, Carl. Hope things are going well for you. Hoptman, how are you doing? I got a helmet video coming up, Hoptman. You might be interested in that. Maybe um, show some military collectibles, too. I might show out some swords and things along that line, possibly. I don't know on the swords so much, but uh, I would hate to get dinged by uh, YouTube for showing something like that. But the helmet should be safe, I would imagine. Dom's trying to hog the information. Um, it's going to go, Dom, that um, the video I'm talking about specifically, it's going to go with what I'm getting um, and where I'm getting it from. Um, it's all tied together, and it's something I've hollered out before, but apparently um, I didn't holler it out really very well, I guess, and people still didn't, didn't catch on what I was talking about. But I, it's free stuff, and it's usually the same places. It's something that I, I can get from several locations quite often. So anyway... Wubba Lubba Dub Dub, how are you doing? Denise's Picks, welcome. I'm using the $5 trial for Ecom Dash to push my listings to multiple sites. Working good so far. eBay is dead for me. Not sure what happened. The whole structure of the, the listings changed. I mean, and I've been hearing people talking about the double listings again. The, the promoted listing and the um, built-in listing are both there again. The, the native uh, listing. Now I don't. I'm not doing any more promoted listings. I'm totally done with them. I don't. I could care less what happens anymore with the promoted listings. I'm not touching them. I, I'm soured by the whole experience, honestly. You know, just even from just the nasty messages that I got over that whole thing. So, or people wanting my kids killed or something like that. That was just terrible. So, I'm done with promoted listings. I haven't had any issues whatsoever, and I've had people ask, "Have you checked it out?" I, I don't really. I'm not going to mess with it. My stuff is so unique. It was me being lazy, I guess, because I was only doing 1% or 2%. It's just not worth it for me, because if somebody wants my items, they're looking for my specific items. And I got enough in any category or, or criteria to, you know, warrant anybody looking for, say, a Santa Claus piece of paper is going to see my store at some point. There's just no way around it, because I got some of the, the top, say, in the top 50 or so. I've got quite a few in that little range up there, um, price-wise, high price-wise, I guess I should say. Yeah, I uh, the ecom dash is one I've been I've been talking and and we might uh, go from Cellbrite to ecom dash price wise. They're they're almost half the cost of Cellbrite. And the people that I've talked to who have used ecom dash say it's been easier than any of the other ones because when you import stuff in say from eBay and you want to push it out to Amazon, the categories are are the issue. You're going to run into where the categories aren't going to line up. So you've got to like set up rules for everything. And if, if you're like me and have a ton of stuff in a bunch of different categories, that's where I run into trouble because I've got to like funnel all postcards and historical um, uh, collectibles on Amazon and stuff like that. So you're changing from a whole bunch of little different categories on eBay with subcategories and then secondary subcategories, like nested, nesting like in a, a scripting or something like that. But that's what I have to, that's the biggest drawback. And I know Amazon better than anybody else who works here. So I end up having to mess with the Amazon and a bunch of the Etsy and stuff like that too. So anyway, uh, Ecom Dash, from what I heard, is a little better than Cellbrite. And I don't care that I spent a bunch of time on Cellbrite. I got my money's worth out of Cellbrite. Let's just put it that way. So I'm not going to be upset, but I'm looking for easier integration after doing it for months now and still not being being to where I want to be because we wanted to be rolling with our own site right this week, you know, so I'm, I'm behind by like two or three weeks. It's probably going to be first of November before we get our own site up. Um, rushing to do that again because it's going to lower my cost because I'm not paying all the fees to somebody else. You know, and every item I sell to anybody, I we are printing cards for that. I have a card company that we've been using for quite some time. I got a real good rate on it because I print art cards from them. And uh, we've done that for, you know, like four years now they've been printing for us. So um, anyway, so there's going to be cards going out and everything I sell, steering everybody to my own personal site. My dog's down here. I've got hair floating. So that's a goal for us as well, too. So Mary Beth, how are you doing? Thrift and Flip, what's up? How are you doing? Five dozen horse gas masks. Well, I'll tell Mark you did the shout out there as well. My feed is frozen, so let me see if I can get it moving again here. There we go. Now I gotta find where we were at. Hang on just a second, folks. 
Don't want to miss anybody. Marie Paralette, how are you doing? The MT Picker, welcome. Pittsburgh, good name there. How are you doing? Hey, Marikex7, how are you doing tonight? Good to see you. Let's pop down here. Again, there's been a lot going on around, so I made international sale of the day after I clicked on the, all the other countries under some tab. I just went digging $50 sale plus shipping. Yeah, that's you can list um, on like six foreign platforms. The only problem I had with that is it just forced me into it once, and I ended up shutting it all down. Um, you have to go into third-party apps in the settings if you don't like that. And you can turn that off if there's an issue with it. But I couldn't do anything with the listings on it because then you had to register and sign in on the other foreign language site if something didn't go right with it or if the address was different or something else is different. And in the translation, it works okay, but you still don't have the final information. So I didn't do any of that, that aspect of it because your eBay's got, I think, what's it, 11 sites now or something like that? It's just posting your, your listings on. You can get six listings, and I think it gives you 60% of your listing total, or maybe it's 30 or 40% of all of your items can be listed. I ended up having, when we did a test with it, like 5,000 listings on other sites. And what happened is I just got a ton of emails in foreign language, and the, even with the translation, I, I, I couldn't tell what they were trying to ask because they were expecting it to be maybe a, a foreign language speaker. Maybe they, they thought I was speaking the same language as them because it translated all of your listings into those languages automatically. I didn't like it. I didn't care. I, I felt like I couldn't offer good customer service because of the, the gap in the translations and the fact that I'd have to register on each specific site to, to get it all going, which, which was an aggravation to me, and I just didn't like it. Well, thank you, Karen. I appreciate the super chat. Keep it up. That's pretty cute. I haven't seen that before. Thank you for the four ninety nine super chat, Karen. Again, there is a bolo video coming up tomorrow on Patreon for you guys too. So guys and gals, pardon me. Thank you very kindly though, Karen. Uh, let's see here. Grace, how are you doing? Yeah, I'm unfortunately I don't know everybody's first names. Illinois is where Northern Illinois is where I'm at. Yeah, I'm going to be in that general area. Um, we're just going across. I'm looking at somebody's lifetime collection of something, and hopefully it, it is what it looks like. I've seen some video that the gentleman sent me. Um, it's worth, you know, the the drive. We'll have a a 29-foot, uh, I think it's 29 or 28-foot U-Haul, um, and my uh, one of my kids is going with me probably, too, on the weekend. Uh, New Freedom 21, how are you doing? Alice Faye in D.C. I spent a lot of time just outside of Pentagon City. Um, lived there for a f quite a few years. Um, not a huge fan of it, but we used to go to Laurel a lot, Laurel, Maryland. And um, I got to see the uh, all the boat shows there by Annapolis near the, the Naval um, Academy and stuff. It was neat to see stuff out there, too, I have to say. Don't make you cry. Um I just want to let everybody know what's going on. I've got a lot of stuff. Um, we've got permission from several um, antique stores and malls. Um, so we're going to go in there and we're going to talk about stuff in the store as well, um, what to look for. So I can show you live, uh, you know, well, it won't be live, but it'll be a booth by booth breakdown on, on you know, what I'm doing source. And we'll talk about some of the items, why or why not to buy them. I'm going to bring Ian with me that day or maybe um, my, my youngest and we'll do some videos there. Um, so anyway, uh, working on some stuff in the, in the background here. Uh, where are we? Rock Bertaruda. I'm sure I butchered that. I do apologize. Coming back from vacation ready for quarter four. Next year will be my year. Thanks to Don. Well, thank you very kindly. Glad to have you. Penny Day. Welcome, Penny. How are you doing? Recycled Ranch. Thanks for all your help. Videos been selling on eBay since 2003. That's a pretty decent time frame. Hopefully you're still doing very well with it. Things have changed, obviously, since 2003. House of Treasures. Welcome. Creative Uniques. Hey, everyone. First time I have been able to watch live. I'm addicted to this channel, and I'm so thankful. Can't wait to join the Patreon group soon as well. Thank you for sharing what your knowledge. Well, thank you very kindly there, Creative Uniques. Kay and Mike C, how are you doing? 
yeah, you can just download your sales and reports from eBay, you know, if that's what you want to do. I don't track mine by the hour, but I have a good basis. Um, you know, I know what time frame stuff's going to come in on which day. Um, it's just a given. And I know at the end of the month, you know, what happens after that. I know usually third, fourth, fifth, sixth of the month are usually really good days because everybody's paid their bills and the next paycheck is extra. You know, things like that. I've got a, a group of people that, you know, have been buying from us for God, I don't know how long. Some people I have like a, a one lady, very, very pleasant lady. I've talked and I know how many kids she has. I know how many grandkids she has. She buys a lot of religious stuff for me. Um, it's one of a, several that I'll let them hold off through the end of the, the whole month. So I'll, I'll hold off every purchase they make for 30 days. And at the end of the 30 days, I invoice them for it. Your items, if they're not paid for in 30 days, are going to drop off and you won't be able to invoice them after a 30-day revolving uh, period. So if you didn't know that, um, something we learned, the, the, well, not the hard way. It's not a big ordeal to fix it. I just added it into the, the ones that I couldn't invoice here. We just added it into the uh, uh, shipping total because I'm, I'm pay a fee on it either way. So it really didn't matter where I, I added it. The, the fee is the same. So anyway, but uh, I do that quite a bit with uh, uh, several people here that they'll buy throughout the month. It's fine with me because then I can pull out the items slowly and I just keep them in a, in a little packet. So at the end of the month when they're ready to pay, I've got everything already long since pulled out. Because if you haven't pulled out like 60, 70 cards for a purchase before all at the same time, it, it takes some time. Because you're going back and forth and sometimes you're in the same bin several times. So... You know, I try to do them at a staggering pace. Uh, the other day, we sold like 26 to the same person, and they were all over the place. So it was a lot of pulling out bins and stuff. It was a lot of money, so I'm not complaining, but um, anyway. Uh, love the backdrop and plants behind you. Yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. Um, when we lived in Florida, it just reminds me of um, some places we used to go and stuff. I was a big fan of um, Epcot Center, the the worlds around there, because it was kind of immersive. Um, like the Moroccan one was really neat and all that, too. I worked at Disney for 10 years, if, if nobody, if you're just new to the channel. And we used to play around at the parks for all that 10 years and hang out with friends and, and we'd drink around the world was a big thing back then. You'd literally go to every country that served alcohol and you'd drink around the world is what we called it back in the day and stuff like that. And Disney used to open up the parks just for the employees and there'd be nobody else there, which was really cool. And they stopped it while we were there, but it was pretty cool. We did that uh, quite a bit. We do the cast member parties and things like that and met my wife at Disney. I actually got married on Disney property um, at a place called Little Lake Brian, which isn't there anymore. It's now, um, I think, Animal Kingdom or something, if you didn't know. Um, but I'm an old-school Disney person. Did artwork for them as well. I got a huge mural that um, they pretty much it's on the backstage, behind-the-scenes tour and everything. It's one of the, the attractions on the tour, believe it or not. Uh, let me slide down here. Myra Elaine, how are you doing? Again, sometimes I'm bad on name pronunciation, so I apologize. Paul Tidwell, how are you doing? Yeah, Paul's saying the same thing. And I, I have people come and, and get really nasty with me, too, when they say that I'm, I don't find this stuff. I, what, I don't know where else I'd get this stuff from if I didn't find it all the time. You know, this is just from just uh, about 20 minutes worth of picking at one spot. Somebody gave me a, a call, and I went out and checked out something. And sure enough, there's a lot of paper items there. Let me just show you a few since we're, we're talking about stuff. This one's really neat. Movie uh, Studio, Mount Low Trip, California Pacific Electric. It's got a hotel, um, Clark Hotel, Auditorium Hotel. This is just a little tiny little sheet, timetable sheet. I could get 40 bucks for this little piece of paper here. I, I don't even have a quarter into it probably because I bought it all together in a big lot. But that's the kind of stuff where I make all my money at, stuff like this. I mean, look at these cars on there. I mean, that's just the bomb in my book. It's got a map on the other side. Um, it's nice condition. I mean, it's really nice for circa 1920s. Something like this, I'll probably put 75 bucks on it because it has a map on it. Just a nice example. I mean, that's just the kind of stuff that I love. I mean, I, I get excited when I see this kind of stuff. California especially. Catalina Island, if you don't know what that is. Avalon, um, look that up. Anything that says Catalina, I usually take a look at. Not everything from Catalina Island is worth a ton of money, but um, it's a neat place. I'd love to get there one of these days, just personal opinion. But Monterey is always good, so Monterey stuff or something I always look for. Um, there's a golf course out there. Anything that says Monterey and golf and stuff like that, you really want to grab it up. 
Monterey, Hotel Monterey. This is just a really nice piece here. Again, this could be 50 or 60 bucks. I have five bucks in everything you saw in my hands, mind you. Here's another one, Santa Barbara. Um, Davis, and I know Davis. There's some postcards out by Davis. Um, this company, um, circa 1920s, even if there's no car, I can almost guarantee you. And if you, you've seen enough of this stuff, the coloring, the, the schemes they do. Yeah, I can see some of this isn't showing as well with the screen. But it's the scheme of the coloring on here, you can date these by the printing, the the plainness, the the blandness of it. the That per, uh, orange I see in so many things, that same similar orange. And just a perfect example, orange again, same orange again. It's on the border around here. And even on here, you'll see similar orange colors. So if you know your colors and printing and what they did, it's a good way to, to, to uh, age stuff. And I, I, I try to tell people that. And I know it's hard to it's hard for some people to get. But after a while, you'll see, like, the, the bubble letters. They're, they're almost always done the same way, no matter what they are. Bubble letters, similar style. Bubble letters. They stopped doing that at a certain point. It wasn't in fad anymore. There was a fad to to printing at one time, from what I've seen. And I, I took some history classes on art, obviously, and stuff like that. I at one time wanted to get a, a curator's um, thing and do like restoration and stuff. But anyway, let's go back to some questions. I know I ranted and uh, wandered off topic here. Hey, Steve Elmore, how are you doing? Myra again. Amazon seller 99. Welcome as well. Most real estate background so far. I liked this one. Honestly, I did. We've had pretty much all those plants you've seen at one time or another. So we have some plants now. Well, thank you, Dom. I'm going to be putting at least a video up every week um, going forward from this point on. Sundays, they'll be up at least, if not a second one. The the um, uh, Victorian uh, Christmas ornaments should be really uh, enjoyable, I would hope. Um, and I'm going to show you prices on what some of the ones I'm going to be doing sell for to give you an idea on, you know, everything's not going to sell. And they don't have to sell on eBay to be worth something. There's a lot of people around here who do the church Christmas bazaars that we know, and I've set up at them before in the past at a couple of them. So I know you can make money, and it's, you know, you, you can go from one church to another church is what these people do around here. Um, maybe I'll even sit down and talk to some, and maybe we'll do that on the other channel too, because I know some people who actually do that. My church does it. They have a huge bazaar. As a, when, I worked, when I was in the Boy Scouts, I worked the bazaars and helped out a lot of the, the functions and carnivals and festivals the church did. So nowadays we help out at a Greek one down here occasionally for some of the groups that my kids were involved in, like the robotics team and things like that too. So I, I enjoy going to some of those festivals. The Greek festival around here is the bomb if you like odd and interesting food. So, you know, just FYI. Now let's pop down here. It's not going to be a super long one today either. I'm going to cut it off in about 20, 25 minutes here. I, I've just had so much going on. I've got to be up real early in the morning. Um, I've got, as I said, a drive to Cincinnati, and we're going to be driving to Illinois, and then I've got to drive into Michigan. Um, in the within the next seven days, this is all going to happen too. So somebody will still be here. We'll have employees, everything else. It'll just be me and somebody else going with me. Uh, let's see here. One Detroit, how are you doing? I came across an old scrapbook full of newspaper articles about boxer Joe Lewis. That may hold some value, uh, especially if you're from Detroit. Joe Lewis Arena, if you don't know about that, you know that's there. So um, I've been there. Um, Joe Lewis stuff around here is pretty hot. Um, stuff like that can be regional too. A lot of people still remember the old days with you know Joe Lewis and everything. So, FYI. I, I'm not a sports person, but I, I know the ones to buy. Let's just put it that way. Joe Lewis is stuff that I would probably buy. It, it, if it has some real photos or something like that, then it, definitely so. Let me pop down. Well, thank you, Ship, uh, ship and Sunshine. Brisbane, hey, Kathy, how are you doing? Um, video will be up tomorrow on, on Patreon if you didn't catch that. First time here, Susan Arrington. How are you doing? Welcome. Jeffrey D., welcome as well. Uh, if you haven't hit that like button, why don't you hit that like button? I'm around, a, well, it's fluctuating, about 150 people on now. And if you haven't hit the like button, pop that like button down for us there. It does help the channel. Uh, let me see here. First time here, got that one. Sir William, how are you doing? You are welcome. You posted the jewelry video on Patreon. I'm looking forward to watching that one. 
Um, yeah, that one, I had a lot of questions on that, and that one's just going to be a lot of looking at backs and stuff for aging, um, trying to get you so you can understand the age of it. Um, that's the biggest thing. I've, I've been out with a couple folks recently, and, and we've done some picks. Um, not somebody who wants to be in a video or anything, but I do go, and sometimes people do go along with me occasionally. And um, it, it's, it's hard to judge a date on some of the jewelry, in my opinion, for most people. We've been buying it for 20 years. So I can I don't even need a name on most of it to at least tell you within, a, say, a 5- or 10-year time frame when, when it was made. You can tell by styles. You can tell by the stones, the color of the stones, how the stones are set, and stuff like that, too. So There'll probably be a second video to that, too, going more into the stones and coloring, as I said, too. I hate the phone, Carl here said. Good for what it's good for, but more efficient on it. Yeah, I love the P PC. I, I can type like 60, 70 words a minute still to this day because I'm always typing something. I constantly, constantly. I've been working on that guide, and I think I'm just, you know, zones that zone out, and I'm just typing and typing and typing and typing. And, you know, anyway, from college days, you know, we, we I could type close to 100 words a minute at one one point in college but that was when i was working on my masters because a masters your your thesis is dom will tell you too it, it was 70 pages double side you know it, it was a lot of work let's just put it that way and then i had to it was originally like 100 and some odd pages and you got to narrow it down and your references took up like i think i got like 30 pages of references you know um, a bibliography or works cited page i would say I don't have a fancy phone. Flip top and do not text. I do text, Pamela. Welcome to the show, Pamela Keller. Um, too young, too bold. Welcome as well. Don't want to miss anybody here. Yeah, I, I do text, though. Um, Dom, I text a lot, so he can tell you how many typos I have in there. And Aaron as well, too. Um, anyway. Ship and Sunshine, close to 1K subs on the Art Professor channel. Yeah, um, I don't have much view time, unfortunately. I don't have enough videos going up on there, but it's gonna, we're going to switch that around. Sundays, almost always, I just do art. Whether I video it or not, I'm usually doing some art project. That's why I said we've got a lot of art stuff going um, behind the scenes here. Um, and as I said, we've been working back and forth. The wife's wrote the script, and we've got um, some sh a few scenes shot and things for an animated thing that we've been working on. I did animation with the old school with a, a eight millimeter camera back in the day, and I've always wanted to do it, you know, on my own aspect and what I like to do. So, Tim Burton's always been a, a big plus in my life. I got to see him in person, and that just it would, he was a, he's a cool guy. Let's just put it that way. Uh, where are we? Tried to find the auto feedback, but it's only in Sellers Pro, I think. Rock Bertoruda. Um, I am not sure where or that would be on your aspect of it. Auto feedback. I would say you'd have to have some sort of, of store level. I have an anchor store. Um, I don't know what the levels are on that. Um, I, I do forget sometimes that it's not offered to everybody. I see it every day. I, it's it's thought. So I do apologize if I didn't put that that aspect in there. Totally not my intention. It's hard to step back sometimes to what I see day in and day out that everybody else may not see the same thing. So I do apologize on that one there. That's that's my bad. I just now thought about stating that in there now that you put that in there. What state am I in? I am in Ohio. Kate W., thank you. Something wasn't on my radar until you mentioned it. Turns out the one I picked up today is rare. Not sure which one that is talking about. We got an update to our policy as well. Every policy I have seen is vague now. Every one. Every single one. In fact, when I called about these issues we've been calling about for the last three weeks, he had to look at the policy and judge it. And he quoted something that there's no way would have been okay with the policy and he ended up calling the department and back and forth. And, you know, the answers are so varied. It's just, it's, it's almost sad, I would have to say. But thanks, Annie. Thanks for that, too. Annie's one of my first, she is my first moderator on here ever. Um, Annie's a very bright, uh, she's a musician as well, too. Cold weather on the way. I'm in Texas. Been to Texas many times. My wife has a lot of family in Austin. Yeah, and I lived in Florida for a while, obviously, 10 years. I don't miss the heat, though. Hey, Rick, how are you doing? Hopefully I got your answer on that. I did check last night, I think, before I went to bed. But our time zone, i got to remember that time zone issue. 
Uh, Carl, garage estate sales and auctions year round. Yeah, we used to go to those in Florida year round. There's less of them in the winter, but they still have them. We still do estate sales here in dead of winter, believe it or not. Um, I bundle up and I go early and there's usually not many people waiting ahead of time, especially on the real cold mornings. So that's usually a good time, if you don't mind standing out in the cold for a little while, to be one of the first ones in the door if you really want to do that. I don't go to too many estate sales at, like I used to. I, I don't need to as much anymore. So, you know, it, I love estate sales. Don't get me wrong. I love digging. I love the attics and the basements are like my favorite place. Um, I stray away from the garages only because of insect issues and spider related issues with me anyway um, for no I, I was bit by a spider and i was bedridden for months and my life hasn't been the same since so i'm, I'm paranoid on spiders a brown recluse if you if you don't know what that is look it up uh hustle and grind calgary my last few encounters with ebay customer service i felt like i was on the show punked oh geez now they were everybody's been nice as can be they answered quickly they answered to the best of their knowledge. So I personally don't have any issues with the people on the phone. My issue is that they don't... It's just like Amazon. It's the same issues that Amazon has. One department hasn't a clue what the other department uh, it does. They, they just don't know what goes on. So if you're calling the help desk and they don't contact one of the other departments that handles the specific issue you're talking about, you're getting secondhand information from something they're reading on a screen. And... You know, again, that's what they're supposed to do. They're doing their job. I, I've never had a complaint about anybody I've ever called personally with eBay. And that's that's a fact. I'm not trying to stick up for eBay, but I thought about that. Somebody said, you're, you're, you're BSing me. You've got to have had an issue with somebody on eBay. I, I haven't. I, I can't tell you. Everybody has been polite. I've talked with people about what they sell on their own and all kinds of stuff. And, and it, it's, I always ask if they sell on the site. Um, I ask the same questions every time I, I talk to somebody different, you know, and there's some that I already know, you know, know them by name at least because I've talked to them enough here and there. So it's nice to be friendly with the eBay folks. And again, they're, they're just like us. Most of the people that I talk to on the phone, at least with us support sell on the site, you know, they're like us. They don't make a ton of money. They're not the execs. They're, they're just normal sellers who sell part-time and then work at eBay full-time. So you know, I don't discourage or, or begrudge any of them for giving out information because, again, they only can give out what they have. And I'm not trying to stick up for eBay. This is with any company. Amazon, I have the exact same complaint with. If you call and you're trying to... Get, I've been talking to folks here in my Patreon. Group. Now, one's been ungated and nobody else can get ungated in collectibles, apparently. I don't know what the deal is, but I did it three years ago. So what I did three years ago is no way related to what's, well, more than three years, five years ago or six years ago now, I guess. But what I do now is no way related to what everybody else does. I don't know how to tell somebody how to get in there anymore. I know there's services that, that will pay, and, and it won't really work for collectibles from what I understand because you don't need invoices to get ungated in the collectibles categories. You need to fill out the, the paperwork to whatever they want nowadays. I, I don't know what that is anymore. I even shared the the um, spreadsheets I sent in that Amazon had me fill out. And, you know, that didn't even work for folks with putting their own information in, in the same spot. So I don't know uh, the, the aspect on that. But the, it's the same issue on eBay, same issue on Etsy, same issue on Walmart or Amazon. All the sites have the same issues. One department doesn't know what the other one is is doing. And Walmart is even worse because they're new to this. So, you know, try and get an answer from someone there. I've had issues with that. So just my frustration with some of that. Uh, and there's Annie. We got a more Eastern rolling in here in Massachusetts, but I'm excited because I get to wear a hat and scarf again. I like winter because I wear I wear my leather jackets in the winter. I've got a large collection of them, and it's one of my my things that I love. It's the only clothing piece that I'd never stop buying is leather jackets. And I got like 60 or, or plus leather jackets these days, all my size that I wear occasionally. And I love waiting for the winter to wear them. I love my Fight Club jackets, the one everybody loves the most. We actually bought another one the other day, so the kids can't uh, swipe mine, and it ends up in one of the kids' closets all the time. Not a summer fan. Yeah, I don't mind it cold at all. Our room, bedroom's cold all the time. Peas in a pot, I like that. Yeah, Dom's a good guy. If you haven't checked out Primetime Treasure, huh, go over to his channel and check it out, please, because Dom's a real good guy. Um... I don't converse with a lot of, of resellers online, and not because I'm trying to snub anybody. I don't have time, and um, a lot of them aren't in sync with me, and don't I, I do stuff that most people think is weird and odd, and you know, same with the similar stuff Dom does. So we're on a whole different 
wavelength than, than the folks doing clothing and all the other stuff. Nothing wrong with any of that because I've done clothing. I did the scanning of the books. So I've done everything everybody else does. We do wholesale. I do RA. So, you know, I, I do all that stuff too, but my love is the vintage and the collectibles and sci-fi and I lived at comic book stores, even with my wife. We used to go in Florida. There used to be NCS 1701, which was a comic and collectible shop. And, um, geez, I can't remember the other one. There was a real big one down, downtown or on the outskirts of Orlando that we used to go to a lot. And then there was a place called Atomic Pharaoh um, in the Winter Garden area, too, that we used to go to a lot. Um, I, we used to live at these places. So Cry for Dawn was out then, and we got to meet the guy who wrote it, and we went to dinner. It was just a nice experience all around. We all enjoyed that, and there was a real nice record store called Rock and Roll Heaven on Orange Avenue in Orlando. I don't know if that's still there as well. And We got pretty friendly with the guy who owned it and you know, went to some events and stuff, and I'd, I've been into records for a very long time. So I grew up on records. That's all you could get, so... I know my records. I know my performers on the stuff that I do. And, you know, I've got a love for the music. We even sell, you know, old tracks, you know, with dead copyrights for money on the side. So, I mean, there's more to what we do with records than just selling the record. Um, you know, you just have to understand how the copyrights work on things with stuff like that. So, you know, uh, and for those in Patreon, you know where I make most of my money. I do sell some of the, the, the clips off of those as well. So just FYI, Patreon folks. Haven't listed on eBay for a long time. Need to list my homemade wrapped stones. All kinds of stuff sell. Um, eBay may not even be the correct place for something like that. You've got homemade on Amazon. You've got Etsy now. Um, and there's some other sites, too, for like sci-fi and fantasy-related artwork. There's sites that just do that that we're a part of as well. Um, because I do do some outlandish stuff that I don't share. I don't share a lot of what we do just because it's my own personal life. And I don't know. I've, there's more to it to me. It, me I've, there, most of what I do on the side, my fantasy and stuff, is meaning to me and you know, it's hard to explain to other people, I guess. I don't mind cold. I just, I, I love cold more than I would say. I hate being sweaty and hot. When we live down in, in the south, you get out of the shower, and as soon as you get out, you're already already sweaty and muggy, and it's just not a fun experience sometimes. Carl likes the old stuff, too, obviously, yes. Jason Blake, welcome to the show. Yvonne, Thrifty Rich, how are you doing? Welcome. Flip It For Real, welcome as well. Well, thank you, Charlie Hustle. John Henderson, good evening as well. Ken Ellis, Faye Wynn, that's an interesting name. I will look into that, and I made sure to have something to write that down with. I will look into that, and I will update everybody on that for those interested. Auto feedback. Um, again, I do apologize for that. I should have thought more into that before I did it. I wanted all the information in there, and I was more worried with the content than thinking about the fact of that. Again, it's it's hard to step away sometimes from something I do constantly um, because I, I just touch all this, and I'm not in the same store level as a lot of people. I'm not trying to brag. It's just, it's just the way it is. Uh, I'm from Massachusetts, too. Like I like the fall weather. Rich Sanders. Rich, how are you doing? Um, I loved, in fact, the leaf. There's a leaf background to that video I put up because I was just thinking of fall. We're going to do the, the leaves will be falling here really soon. The colors are just spectacular around here. Well, thank you as well, Pamela. Yeah, Carl's a good guy too. Uh, got a lot in common on what we like as well. Yeah, there are shirts down there. I'm going to have to order a few. Um, I got one of the frogs that I ordered for myself, and I'm going to order another one, actually, because um, I wasn't quite happy with the quality. And I haven't seen the quality on what the shirts look like, unfortunately. I've got one coming in that just says The Auction Professor. Um, I don't promote myself like that in public very often, but I've got a whole line of stuff coming out that's going to help everybody um, probably within this week here. And again, it's not. I'm going to put them at the very, very bottom end of the pricing scale just so you can get them um, if you're interested. Um, uh, you'll see them when they pop up here. I'll call it out or I'll wear one so you can see what I'm talking about. But this is something that I've talked about before. It's a ploy that you can use. So, Uh, let's see here. Kathy Reese, hit postcard, can't sync up trade cards from eBay either. Yeah, I've already went into, I'll have a video on that, or it'll be in one of the Q&As, Kathy and Patreon, on that one. 
Um, I've already dug into that. I was thinking that somebody had said there was another platform they had. HIP has, is a, it's a network of sites, and it used to be, oh, I'm never going to think of what the name it used to be. It used to be called something else, but they have HIP postcards, HIP stamps, and HIP comics. So Dom, if you didn't know that, check out HIP. Um, because they have a, you can cross list your comic books. I'm almost sure I haven't been on the comic book site, but I do the stamps on hips and, and the postcards and you can sync them for free. And it's only like five bucks, I think for a month. So I think it's the same for any site that hip does. Now I did, I did get a direct response from one of the management at hip postcards about that specific issue. When I told them the quantity I wanted to cross in there, they're supposed to give me an update on time frame because they are looking into that. Um, I don't want to mess with API and, and do all that kind of junk, too. Um, I'm just here for easiness at this point. And I wish it was they offered the other aspects on HIP, too. But, yeah, I'm not a big drinker, uh, Carl. We do, I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I like tequila, um, vodka, and gin. Those are my drinks. I'm not a big um, dark liquor person. I don't drink rum or anything like that. And I just, I don't like the taste. Nothing against anybody who does. We've got a friend who's, you know... Um, uh, Jack and Coke, that's all they drink. So, you know, just preference. Everybody has their own preference on that. I don't mind wine either. I like um, uh, Barefoot Moscato. That's what we drink a lot of. I know people say it's junk, but I, I love the taste of it. There's some uh, local Catawba wine that we get here too down on the islands when you go to South Bass Island. For those who are in the area, awesome place. Putin Bay and Kelly's Island are awesome. Collectibles out there. There's even... A thrift store slash antique store on the island that I go and I've sourced that and bought stuff at too. We paid for the trip once even going to that island. So everywhere I go, we usually pay for it if there's enough sourcing venues there. Flipping it good. Well, glad to have you. There's 94 videos up there. Um, some of them are pretty long and some of them are two parts too. You got to scroll down again. I'm updating the intro page on there with instructions. So everybody have instructions on there too. Let's pop down and get some more questions. Uh, we're written to the end. I know I'm used to going longer, but these days I've just my time this time. We're going into the fourth quarter, and things are picking up here for us, too. Uh, I did a boo-boo the other day. I um I put a whole I sent out 1,900 offers to watchers and ended up selling way too much stuff. I couldn't even pack it up. I was up to like 3-something in the morning. Um, obviously the money was good, but I, I don't think I'd ever do that again because, um, I was stressed out. First time I got stressed out on eBay in a long time because I, I didn't know if I'd have enough time because I had my kids and stuff going on the next day. So I was t talking to Dom, I think that day. And I think maybe even I sent Aaron or somebody a picture of it. Uh, let's see here where we at. Gary and Daytona. Welcome as well. Laura or Lauren Johnson. Recovering goth, Annie. How I wouldn't guess. Nothing wrong with that. Some people have made a comment about my son's pants. He's got plaid pants, but he likes the punker stuff. I don't care what a clothing person wears, what color their hair is, what color their skin is or any of that stuff. It doesn't mean anything to me. As long as the person's nice. I get people making comments about my son and stuff like that. I don't care what you say. You know, you my son is his own person, and we let our kids be who they are. He's a good kid. He's on the honor roll. Both of my kids are, honestly. My sons both take honor classes. Um, you know, they got to watch us graduate with a master's. I mean, uh, weird to say, but we did it as an adult, so. Nothing wrong with goth. Yeah, there goes Carl, Carl too. I have no problem with anything like that. I had hair down on my waist when I was younger, and the whole works. We did the poofed up hair from the 80s bands and all that stuff. Peter, how are you doing? Glad to have you on tonight. Thank you very kindly. I enjoyed your camera vid, but been selling for years. Never seen 90% of them you showed. I go to higher-end places where some of those cameras, you might have to shell out $1,500. I guess that's why most people don't don't mess with those cameras. you got to know what you're doing with cameras that cost over 1000 bucks. I'm not, I've never found one of those cameras for anything under than hundreds of dollars. So don't get me wrong. You're not going to run into any of that kind of stuff, the higher end ones. Like I found here and there. So don't get me wrong. Those do show up. And I found some decent ones at estate sales before. But 
I have to go to high-end auctions that have a lot of people there when I want to get that kind of stuff. And I bid up against people that know their stuff as well, too. So it's not like I'm the only guy knowing the cameras that are worth money. The last one we had was an early... Uh, it was a Polaroid brand lens, and I can't remember the, the make on it, but it was something I spent over a thousand bucks on. Uh, didn't want to spend that much. We ended up making six hundred and eighty or some odd dollars off of that purchase. But you know, you got to know what you're doing. That's why in the video I even called out that you better be careful and you better know what you're doing because if I'm going to sink that kind of money into something, I got to be guaranteed. I don't want to waste a thousand bucks. You got to know if something works. And uh, again, you're, you're not going to find most of that at a thrift store, I can tell you. You're not going to go to a garage sale and find most of that. But I have found stuff like that at thrift stores and garage sales before. My first camera I ever sold was a Roly, and we got almost 300 for it. That came from a Savers years ago. you know, And I paid like $5.99 for it at the time. It wasn't even in a display case back in those days. They just had them hanging on a wall, if I remember right. It's been a long time ago, but that was the first piece of camera equipment that I found to resell was a Roly, a small little portable Roly. I didn't even know what a Roly was back then. That's if that gives you a Roly is a German camera, very fine quality German camera. Yeah, the most you're gonna most people will find the Pentex or the um like a Yoshika or something along that line, or a decent uh, Nikon, like a, a T, um, what's the other version? There's like a 7T or something like that. There's a bunch of Nikons that we run into. In fact, I've got one sitting right over here along with some lenses we just picked up. You'd call it demonetizing. Let's pop on down here. Oh, there goes my feed. I just lost my feed. Well, thank you, too, for the uh, second Super Chat. I didn't see that in there till just now. Not necessarily, but I do appreciate it. Thank you very kindly. Am I using Shopify for my store? I do have a Shopify store running. Um, I'm not going to share that yet. Um... We're going to have our own platform, our own site, full-fledged. I already ha own own a couple of, um, what do you call it, um, the addresses. Um, I can't think my brain's dead right now. I, we own the, the .com uh, names. Yeah, Amazon Seller 99, um, I probably will. But we do have a Shopify store, Annie. Yes, yes. Just don't want to say I don't, but... Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking Ecom Dash from what I see. The price is different. I pay just over 100 bucks. I think it's like 110 for uh, Cellbrite. And Ecom Dash is 60 bucks. It's the same structure. Uh, again, I picked Cellbrite because at the time, Cellbrite was the only one that only charges you for the ones that sell, not for how many you have up. And since we've got, we, we could potentially have 60 or 70,000 items up and, and all at one time almost. On other platforms, I didn't want to get billed for listings that were up. You know, I only wanted to get billed for the listings that are selling. Most of the other cross-listing programs were billing you for the ones that were up, no matter what. Even if they don't sell, they were getting their money. So Cellbrite's different. You know, you pay a monthly fee, which I'm fine for because it curates your listings, and I own them now. So if eBay shut down or something, I'd have a copy of everything in a usable format. I wouldn't have to CSV download and then worry about photos and all that other kind of junk. It's just instantly pulls them in, just like HIP, for those of you who did the HIP uh, uh, post uh cross sync on that well thank you carl i really appreciate that very kindly carl again you guys don't have to do that i do honestly appreciate it i think you guys do know for those of you who do watch the show that i do spend a lot of time doing these videos again i'll probably put up a video for patreon one of these days just an extra one not include anything but of what it takes to throw a video together because i get questions well how what do you decide on what goes into a video I try to do put stuff in every video, stuff that I run into or have ran into. I don't want to put stuff in there that I haven't seen or there's just no chance. I, Lalit Glass would be a good example. Um, and again, thank you, Carl, very kindly for that $10 super chat. I don't run into Lalit Glass very often. Have I ran into it? Yes. But I don't see it very often. So I'm not going to do a video saying, hey, you're going to find a bunch of Lalit Glass. Talking about like the camera one. If you want to find those high-end cameras, you're going to spend high-end money on them. That's what I do. But again, if you spend a thousand or two thousand dollars on a camera, you're going to possibly get three or four thousand dollars back out of it. Now, the last one we spent, you know, in the thousand dollar range, I made six eighty. 
six hundred and eighty bucks for a matter of sitting at an auction, spending the cash out, listing it, and then waiting for the cash to come back in two days later is not much work for six hundred and eighty bucks. And on top of that, we were selling other stuff. I list it and forget about it. So think of it that way. If you want to mess with the cameras or higher end stuff that I show or stuff like that, I spend a lot of money for some items. You know, paper wise, most of the time I can get for a dollar or less or five bucks for something like this. You know, it just depends on where I'm at and what I'm buying. So, I mean, that's that's the ploy here. Let me try to get a few more questions because I am going to end it off here in just a few minutes. And again, I do apologize, but my schedule has just been crazy. Um, anyway, we'll just see if we can get a couple more questions in here. Yeah, we're going to do that too. We're As Carl was talking about putting cards in there, that's exactly our plans as well too. Trader Jacks, welcome. Sir William, I know auctions are not like what they used to be, but what are your thoughts on having 30 to 40 auctions ending every day, postcards mostly starting at 590 to keep store always active? I would not do that, Ed. Um, I know I remember your name. I'm sorry, Ed. Um, I wouldn't do that personally. Most postcards are going to take the right person to be on. If you're running auctions and you don't have any competition or it's uh, harder to find postcard and you just put it up for five ninety nine. you may just sell it at five ninety nine. So th that's one reason why I price everything higher. You're going to see pricing in the next, uh, not the next video. The next video is a, a, a bolo, as I said, for Patreon. But the one after that is going to be the pricing video. I didn't forget about the uh, the store review either. So for those who, who still want one, I'll still take some more names for that if you're interested in Patreon. Um, but I wouldn't do that, Ed, um, personally. Because, again... I can sell stuff uh, for higher money than a lot of people here do. I'm not going to worry about it. I price it high. Most people don't research vintage items on what they're worth or what they go for. Most people think, you know, there's not going to be that same postcard to judge it or, you know, whatever the case may be. They're going to judge it on what they usually pay for certain postcards from a city if they're longtime collectors. So I can, I can jack the prices up on a lot of those. I wouldn't do that. What I do on my auctions, I do run auctions every single week. But I, they're the items I just want to blow out that I don't care about. I get a thousand free auctions with each anchor store we have, so I just literally picked several hundred. I don't even use all my free auctions, believe it or not. I throw away probably three or four hundred every single month, maybe more than that, because I don't use them. So I'll just do the ones I want to get rid of. I'll run them for a week. When the weekends, I'll I'll relist the exact same ones over and over again. We at one time had like uh, 300 and some out of those we were doing. It's down to like 50 now because we've sold that much of the items by doing it at just Junko auctions. With the junk auctions like that, I still get my money and make a little profit and it gets off the old inventory so I'm not paying for it anymore. So that's what I do with that, Ed. I'd like to hear your thoughts on Worth Point. I don't pay for Worth Point either. With eBay and Terra Peak and the fact that I've done this for so long, Worth Point, you, you gotta you gotta look at Worth Point from another aspect. If it's been on Worth Point for a long time, you know it's older information. You gotta source it or sort it by newest first, because again, prices change throughout time. They can go up, they can go down. If one hasn't sold or Worth Point doesn't have the information, you're looking at one from five years ago. It may not be valid either. I know what I sell pretty much most most of the pricing on it, just because I've done it for twenty plus years. And again, we have full-time only uh, online resellers for the last nine. That's all we do for money-wise. And when you do just that for 60, 70 hours every single week for nine years, I know that I don't even look up most of the, the items other than maybe some postcards and stuff. But if you blow them out in an auction, you can just give away them one. Like, let's say you listed one for five ninety nine. The person might have paid you twenty five bucks for that postcard, but you only had it five ninety nine, and there was no competition because anybody else interested just didn't happen to be on the time when you were running the auction. So that's what I see as the issue with it. That's why I don't always even pay attention to comp sales a lot of the time on, on items because if there's only a couple of them that have been sold in the comps that comp may not be relevant. And I've said this before because people will go and look at comps and that's the, the price it has to be because that's what the comp said. If you see three comps for an item and they sold at $9.99 as a bin right off the bat, it was probably worth 30 bucks. You know, that's just my take on it. Because if I see a $9.99 one, the only ones that are up all sold as a bin in the $9.99 range, I know I can get more money for that. I, I'm sure of it at that point if there's three bins all sold for the same price. 
because the first person threw out a price, didn't know what to price it. Second person filed suit. Third person probably filed suit because he saw two people selling it for that 10 buck 9.99 price as it was. So that's my philosophy on it. That's why I use that philosophy. It, it hasn't steered me wrong. I don't know what it would do for you, but you see the prices I get for stuff. You know, no exact. Just before the show, we sold $500 in, in four listings. You know, just before the show, and that's just now. And God knows how much is going off. I looked at my phone several times. I've got more offers on there as well right now. So anyway, we'll just take one more, and I will cut it off. I'd hate to do that again. Any tips in selling for fourth quarter? For fourth quarter, we set up our fourth quarter last year, fourth quarter, to get the items for wholesale. That's where the money is really at, in my opinion, because it's, it's staples that you can sell over and over and over again. Obviously, you get the holiday goods out. That's what you want up, like Christmas items. All my Santa stuff is selling right now. Again, I sold two Victorian Santa Claus cards today for 100 bucks a piece. No problem at all. This is the time they're all going to sell. You're going to see that video coming up in the Art Professor channel here I got. And we're going to show you what people do with that kind of stuff and how to recreate it yourself. I'll give you some uh, attachments where you can download a nice 600 DPI quality image of the exact honest piece I'll be using. I'll be using Victorian scraps to show you this and giving you a copy of at least the Santa Claus and the Angel for sure in the ones we're going to be doing. So uh, let's see here. Pamela, I have a huge collection of Lucite grapes made in the 60s. Those are worth some money. I think the last, we, we had a red one, I've had a green one, I've had the yellow ones, the amber one they call them, and the deep reddish ones. I love the, the lucite grapes and stuff, and they make other things too. There's a grape lucite um, hanging swag light that's just awesome, and it's a bunch of lucite grapes, and in the middle is the light, so the whole bunch lights up, and it has little uh, actual wood, like driftwood sticks on it, and it has artificial leaves. It looks really neat. I know it looks like a giant bunch of grapes. I love those. I know exactly what you're talking about. I probably even shown a few in here as well. I don't want to cut anybody off, but we're, we're at the end here, unfortunately. Um, we're going to be mixing things up as well. As I said, I'll have some videos shot at some locations. Um, hopefully a lot of good content coming out here for you. So anyway, I'm glad to have everybody on. Hopefully your sales are doing good. Um, Patreon wise tomorrow again, I'll have another video up here on YouTube as well tomorrow. Uh, some inter interesting content coming up Sunday, so look out in the Art Professor for Sunday if you want to know how to make some reproduction Victorian Christmas ornaments. Again, I'm going to have the whole breakdown, everything I used to make them, including uh, copies you can print off yourself on a color copier. So hopefully everybody has a good night and glad to have you on here. If you didn't hit the uh, like button, please hit the like button. And don't forget, I'm on Instagram as the Auction Professor as well. So have a good evening.